HVAC motors have evolved over the years, redesigned to improve comfort and increase energy efficiency with each generation. Now on paper, in the lab, every step forward looks better, more efficient, more comfortable. But out in the field, things get messy. Because one thing almost never changes when these high sear systems are installed, and that is the ductwork. And it flips everything you thought you knew about high efficiency systems completely upside down. Now, it's not a big secret that poor duct design, dirty filters, dirty evaporator coil, your wife's cat finding a new place to sleep, even wrong choice of filters can reduce efficiency. Problem here is in how each one of these motors actually work under those conditions and why these high efficiency motors can actually be much worse than an older motor that's 20 years old that you just tore out. Now with these permanent split capacitor motors or PSC motors, basically what they do when they meet high resistance in a duct system is that the volume of air moving through the system is going to be reduced. And because there's less air moving through the motor, it doesn't have to work as hard. So it actually draws less amperage in these situations. Now this is not an energy savings because these cycle times run longer when you're moving less air. So it's kind of a wash. Now, next up, we have the electronically communicated motor or ECM motor that is constant torque. Now, what these motors do when they meet resistance in the duct system is they actually will start to draw more amps to maintain torque, and this helps maintain some of the airflow. So unlike a PSC motor, you won't see 30-40% reduction in airflow, but you still might see about 15-25%. Now that shortens cycle times a little bit, but we're also increasing our power draw to do that. Then we come to ECM motors that are variable speed, also known as inverter motors. Now these are the systems manufacturers love to advertise as saving money. Contractors often push this as well to sell units. And we've all seen these charts showing how much money you could potentially save over the course of a year. But here's what happened when you put these high sear, high efficiency systems into poor situations. You actually get an energy spike in consumption. I mean, here's why. Now, for a long time, we've had what's called a sear rating or a seasonal energy efficient rating. And this basically just determines how efficient the system is. Obviously, the higher that number is, the more efficient it is. Now, the problem with this old system is that they based these efficiency ratings on a static pressure, which is the resistance in a duct system as being 0.1 or 0.2 inches of water column, which is you will never see that in a residential system. So the only way to get those really high sear ratings is to basically have an invisible duct system with no resistance on it whatsoever. Wow. So they came out with the sear 2 rating. And this was based on a more realistic 0.5 inches of water column. Now on a residential duct system, that's not a bad number at all. You can get the advertised efficiency of the system up to that point. But once you go beyond it, things go downhill very quickly. These variable speed motors are designed to push back against this resistance in the ductwork. And most of these motors are rated up to 0.8 inches of water column. So basically what I'm telling you here is that 0.5, you've maxed out whatever efficiency you can get out of that system. And once you go above that, you start losing efficiency. The reason for this is because a variable speed motor will start pushing back against that static pressure to maintain the proper amount of airflow so we don't see a drop off even as resistance increases. But once we start reaching a resistance value that exceeds what the motor is capable of, we have two problems that arise. Number one, our motor is pulling a lot of amperage in order to push back against that static pressure. And once the static pressure exceeds the rating of the motor, now we're also getting a drop off in the volume of air that's moving. So we're getting double whammy here. We're drawing high power and we're losing airflow at the same time. Now, this is a lot worse than the PSC motor we started off with, where we can see a 30-40% reduction in airflow, because at least with those motors, it's not increasing amp draw to fight back against it. It's actually decreasing amp draw. But when you have a motor that is both increasing amperage and losing airflow at the same time, you have the opposite of efficiency. You have a highly inefficient situation. Now, the bad news is, is I've seen a lot of homes that have high static pressure readings that exceed what the motor can actually handle. But the good news is, is that this is a situation that can be very easily avoided with a five minute static pressure test before anything else is done. 
Now, upgrading a duct system for thousands of dollars more in order to get the advertised efficiency is something a lot of homeowners don't like hearing. And a lot of contractors, whether they know about it or not, don't like bringing it up for the same exact reason. So I guess it all boils down to the honor system. And that's the ugly truth. Efficiency ratings are basically on the honor system. You don't actually know if you're delivering or getting what's on the label unless someone measures static pressure, checks airflow, and makes sure the ducts aren't choking the system. Now, if you're a tech, don't skip static pressure. It tells you more about efficiency than any sticker ever will. And if you're a homeowner, don't just look at the SEER number. Ask if anyone's tested your ducts because that's what makes or breaks true efficiency.